What's up, Ada Nation? A welcome to Dap Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. As a part of today's video, I'm sitting down with Wes, one of the founders of the Rare Network, one of the biggest event hosting platforms here within the Cardano ecosystem. If you guys have not heard about Rare Evo, I'd be highly surprised, but they're basically the ones that put this event on. As a part of today's video, we're diving into some Project Catalyst funding round number 12 proposals for an NFT based um, loyalty platform. But then we're also going to talk about three separate separate events, which the team plans to attend and provide some value to not only to Cardano, but to members outside of the current ecosystem. That said, let me bring up today's guest, Wes. Good morning. How are you doing, man? Doing well. Uh, it's actually my evening. I'm over here in uh, Singapore at the moment. GM to you, GN to everyone uh, around the world. Freed, it's always a pleasure to be on the show uh, in between. Yeah, seeing you um, at all the conferences throughout the year and on the show, I feel like we uh, cross paths more frequently than uh, most community members. So, yeah, uh, thanks for having me on in advance here and really looking forward to sharing more of uh, what we've got going on between the event, but also um, honing in um, here on some of our Fund 12 proposals and the greater vision of Rare Network. Yeah, the, the, the pleasure is mine. Always a pleasure seeing you. Um, you are missing your right hand man rant today. Um, typically, when whenever I'm collaborating or working with you guys, it's like the both of you guys, right? So hopefully he's well. Again, thank you for sharing some of your time with me here. I know you guys are getting ready for Rare Evo. And I've actually sat down with you guys on multiple occasions to talk about Rare Evo. So um, I do want to quickly plug that in here for the viewers. Um, if you're going to be within the United States or if you want to travel to the U.S., definitely make sure to check out Rare Evo. It'll be taking place within, I want to say, the next 40 to 50 days, if I'm not mistaken, right? So um, quite a bit coming out there. Uh, maybe you can give us a quick recap of of Rare Evo, and then we can dive straight into their Catalyst proposals. For sure. Yeah, so Rare Evo is happening this year. Uh, we're a full-on blockchain industry event uh, where we welcome multi-chain projects of any size uh, to partake in the conference experience, whether it's being in attendance, exhibiting, speaking on our stage, hosting a workshop, or just getting general brand exposure and networking opportunities. A um, little bit of background. Uh, our company, Rare Network, uh, which does not only blockchain events around the world, Rare Evo is our flagship, uh, but in addition produces quite a bit of uh, professional media services uh, when it comes to Web3 in general. Uh, we originated out of the Cardano ecosystem. So my partner Rand and I uh, spun up a stake pool to really get hands on and go beyond um, you know, the average investor. Um, Cardano spoke to both of us and, and we agreed that it was the move. And that's kind of how we formulated the whole rare brand. And as of course, everyone knows um, in the ecosystem that these stake pools require a mission. Um, and between our shared background, uh, as well as having some serious light bulb moments uh, while attending these conferences and seeing the value, uh, we launched Rare Evo. Um, so this is our annual event. We're on our third year. And I would say the newest element to it is really entering the Vegas territory, moving it from Denver to Vegas for a lot more fun. And I think a lot more international appeal because who doesn't like going to Vegas? And on top of that, it's at Caesars Palace. So again, that's August 15th through the 17th. As you mentioned, it's coming up right around the corner. We've got our heads down to make it uh, a totally memorable event. And I think a lot of people are going to gain a lot uh, by participating uh, far and wide. I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I was just sharing the list of speakers there. You guys got some pretty big heavy hitters here. I mean, we've got Charles Hoskinson, Elena Banner. I believe she was there last year as well. Um, we've got the Altcoin Daily Brothers, Mickey Watkins, um, Dr. Navjeet Dalawal from Iagon. Uh, a lot of a lot of big names. I'm looking forward to the conversations, the panels, the breakout sessions, and of course, the food is always right. But um, that said, now that we've sort of got the introduction and the groundwork laid out here, Wes, let's dive into Project Catalyst. So um, I'm not sure. If this is the first time that you guys have actually put out Project Catalyst proposals. I'd love to maybe hear about your guys' prior experience in Catalyst, but let's talk a little bit about some of the brand new platforms you guys are aiming to bring to the scene to make event attendance and customer loyalty, right? Um, sort of a thing of the future for Rare Network. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a great relationship with Project Catalyst as a platform 
the team and of course all of our voters in the community that support us to help get this funding. Um, myself and Rand are 50-50 owners. We're a small business. So Catalyst acts as this accelerator and support mechanism that allows us to um, expand on our business, um, which already is a risky venture, I would say, to start, um, but be able to move at a faster rate, take a little less risk on, and then benefit not only ourselves, but the Cardano ecosystem as a whole. Um, we received our first funds in Fund 9, uh, where we actually uh, funded the live streaming element and were able to beef up our main stage at our first uh, rare event back when it was Rare Bloom. Um, since then, we've also received funds in Fund 11, uh, where we were able to uh, host some of these rare socials that we'll get into, our side events worldwide at larger conferences, and um, begin to build our tech stack by minting uh, Cardano based um, NFT tickets uh, for this year's Rare Evo 2024. And that was known as the Rare Perks Collection. It's something we plan to continue on each year. And it gives um, some, of course, added gamification like NFTs are great at um, for people to get um, added Vegas experiences um, as rewards um, to their ticket purchase. Uh, whereas the standard ticketing um, options do not come with those features. So. Uh, we've succeeded at that. Uh, every single fund, when we have these proposals, we actually complete um, all of the milestones for the majority of the, the proposals before we actually can even submit in the next fund. So we act really fast. Um, we provide professionally produced media, giving you know evidence as to how we fulfill these obligations and milestones for each proposal. And I think we do it in a very cost efficient um, manner because, you know, a lot of the event side uh, of the business is heavier on cost. And we've been able to uh, use our skill sets uh, to benefit, benefit from this the most and also kind of bring some fuel back into the Cardano ecosystem by really acting like as a Trojan horse in a multi-chain world uh, to introduce Cardano and all that it has to offer to other multi-chain investors, maxis that may be able to get swayed in one way or, or another to support another chain. Um, and then, of course, like you saw um, from our speakers and sponsors, also introducing the Cardano ecosystem to the enterprise world as well, who are um, kind of contemplating at this moment or already involved in adopting blockchain solutions for their traditional business needs. Very nicely put in what I appreciate about what you guys do um, from a content creator's perspective is, is, as you mentioned, document, right? Uh, I think a lot of people, um, number one, just don't understand the process, but the number two, don't understand how cost, um, how cost intensive it is to record content, you know, especially at e events such as the one that you guys are putting on and attending where there's a lot going on. So um, I've seen your guys' team expand and I was able to meet a few of you guys in consensus. I love seeing, you know, the professionalism, you guys having a crew to help you guys, you know, expand and to do this more efficiently. So again, as a content creator, I can appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, let's talk about one of the first proposals here, which is dealing with a Cardano NFT ticketing and a conference goer platform. Do you mind explaining, you know, how this benefits, number one, the Cardano community? But the number two, if there's any sort of use cases outside the outside of the ecosystem for this platform as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the first, I would say, big technical proposal that we have um, kind of adding on to our NFT uh, ticketing integration that we rolled out this year is how do we incorporate that into an actual DAP? Um, something that's mobile, user-friendly, and has everything that someone needs uh, to not only um, purchase their ticket, attend the event, um, but also claim their QR code um, through their NFT uh, that they purchase or mint through us. Um, additionally, um, having all the information right in the palm of their hand rather than needing to go and scan a QR code on a banner or navigate through a traditional website uh, we want to make it to where um, basically Cardano supports uh, Web3 events and conferences, and then having the ability to actually expand on that and roll it out to even more traditional 
uh, conferences or events. Um, so there are platforms like Luma and Eventbrite and meetup.com um, that offer this from the web two side. And we would like to basically start to roll this out first for Rare Evo 2025. I think that's when we'll actually uh, roll it out and go live with it for our first uh, round of testing. Um, and then being able to have some controls over that because right now uh, these traditional services, they limit you, they're subscription-based services and you don't have the ability to have much flexibility when it comes to um, you know, submitting enhancement requests and actually getting those back in time where you can use it, you know, in a single financial year. So really the goal is to take our rare perks NFTs, um, have the ability to further customize them, and then allow someone to connect their wallet to this conference goer app, then giving them um, the ability uh, to really manage that all in one one place. Um, so with that, it is building off of an already existing tech stack. Um, and we think that it will just add a lot of value um, from the rare Evo conference experience itself. But on top of that, hopefully be able to share it with other Web3 events production companies, um, which, you know, in turn creates more Cardano wallets, gets more people minting on Cardano. Um, and more users, basically. So from a user acquisition standpoint, from the general Cardano ecosystem, it's great. And then from us, you know, staying true to our brand as Web3 natives and trying to adopt the technology as best we can without taking on too much risk or overloading ourselves with work. Uh, it's, it's a really nice combination for us to get the ball rolling and starting to be seen as not only a blockchain events and media production company, uh, but also a technology solutions provider as well. Um, so the, the code and everything, it won't necessarily be open source, but we will eventually open the doors um, to allowing people to use a complimentary and then hopefully um, factoring that into our you know, business strategy and gaining more customers paying customers uh, to utilize it as well once it's kind of commercially viable. So I've got a couple of questions. Um, I appreciate the the, the transparency um, about the, the open source portion. Now, I would like to dive into to security, but I don't want to get too technical here. I think from a ticketing perspective, there's two questions that I have, right? So you guys as the Rare Network, you guys are putting on defense. I'd love to maybe hear about how you guys plan on developing this. Do you guys have a team in-house of developers already? Or do you guys plan on contracting this work out to other people that already have experience in the ticketing space? And then the second question is just surrounding resale, right? So um, if everything is minted as NFTs, I assume that there's resale on the secondary markets with no hand-holding or no, no, no tied hands, right? So I'd love to hear about, you know, the opportunities that you guys see from a resale perspective and then exactly who or how you guys plan to actually develop this um, ticketing software. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have an uh, in-house development team. Um, Vinny and Kevin lead that on our team. Um, they're virtually full-time with us at Rare Evo. So um, they're the ones that build the website. Um, incorporate the existing tickets into, you know, the ability to scan them day of Rare Evo. Um, so they've built a number of uh, technology solutions for us and their greater team has been, you know, basically training for the past year on how to develop on Cardano. Um, this year, just recently, we rolled out Wallet Connect um, so that you can get special merch if you uh, hold one of our VIP rare perks pass tickets and get a special selection of merchandise to choose from as a VIP holder. So we've been experimenting in the background. We haven't been extremely vocal on it um, or put a ton of emphasis, really just trying to um, knock it out of the park with Rare Evo 2024. Um, but you'll start to see a lot more technology solutions from us and yeah, within the core team, we're completely uh, capable of doing that. Of course, we do have um, some partners. We work with uh, Epoch Pool um, for our stake pool, uh, for our NFT ticketing integration. 
Um, originally, we worked with Inmaker and Newcast and learned some good things from them. But yeah, the team is eager um, to make this happen. And really, it's just about getting the funding to be able to pay them properly and execute on this in full. Uh, you know, we're not big fans of uh, making commitments and not following through, and we like to over deliver. And with the funding we'll receive, hopefully here from Fund 12, uh, we can make all of that happen. Uh, I would say very quickly in time for Rare Evo 2025. That was actually my next question, um, which was around the timeline. Now, I didn't give you an opportunity to touch on the secondary sales. So uh, maybe if you want to address both of those, that'd be great. Yeah, for sure. So when it comes to secondary sales, we've already got that figured out um, at the moment. So um, there's a couple kind of ingredients that are necessary for this recipe. And that is um, on the NFTs it, themselves, there needs to be metadata um, with a status, uh, whether the ticket is claimed or unclaimed. Um, there needs to be artwork in relationship to those metadata statuses um, in order for someone to actually have a visual indicator that they're purchasing a ticket that is unclaimed on the secondary, because there really wouldn't be a reason to purchase a claim ticket, maybe in the future for certain airdrops or token drips or things like that. But um, for the most part, and the primary reason for an NFT ticket, buying on the secondary, you would want that unclaimed. Um, so the claiming portal is the other um, key factor here, uh, where once you go in, register your ticket for your name, and you are committed to attend the event, right? Uh, you need to have the ability to update that, associate your personal information with the ticket itself, and then mark the ticket as claimed. Um, whereas on, let's say, JPEG store or other marketplaces, that would be reflected. So when those secondary buyers are going there, they're not purchasing a ticket that's already been used to enter the event. So each ticket is one entry uh, to the event. And once it's claimed, there's no way to get your hands on the QR code. I guess the third major point is making sure that QR code stays private to you. And that's what we intend to do uh, with the app. Your wallet would need to be connected to the app in order to then prove that you have ownership of that NFT, the app to recognize that that NFT is actually claimed um, so that we know who is coming and going from our event. And then you know, the final step being able to display that QR code for scan day of event. Um, so yes, there is definitely some loopholes uh, that you have to look out for uh, when it comes to making sure that uh, status stays up to date and, and valid so that person can kind of maintain ownership and also not rip someone off by uh, claiming a ticket and then trying to, to ditch it. Yeah, again, I know, and I've only um, dealt with ticketing at a very, very surface or high level. You obviously live and breathe, you know, the event space. And I'm sure you've seen how people try to get up on others when it comes to really, really big events, right? So I think from a security standpoint, um, you guys really have to tighten that down and make sure that there's no way to gamify or to take advantage of people, especially after an event has occurred. Um, again, which is why I appreciate what you mentioned about the visual cue and obviously the metadata directly tied to the NFT, just to let people know, hey, this event is either expired or this ticket's already been claimed. Therefore, what you're purchasing isn't actually getting you access to anything extra or anything in the future that hasn't already been claimed, you know? So um, again, thank you for taking the time to answer that. Now let's roll into the second proposal, which I think ties into this very, very closely. So there is a need for loyalty or um, customer points within the ecosystem. Um, you guys are proposing something to solve this. I'd love to hear a little bit more about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, from a real world use case, this even speaks louder. Um, than kind of siloing it to just ticketing, right? So um, whether you're familiar with loyalty points from the use of a credit card or being loyal to a particular airline or hotel brand, um, which I'm sure we're both familiar with that as much travel as we do on the road, um, those points can really come in handy. And we would like to make that possible with Cardano native assets. Um, so 
first rolling it out, of course, on our website to make sure that we can refine the solution. But being able to reward people in ADA or any particular um, Cardano based token uh, when they make any traditional e commerce purchase. Um, so, whether you're buying a ticket to our event and getting dripped back, let's say ADA or perhaps rare token, hint, hint, or a you know piece of swag, merch, um, being able to get a little bit back uh, for making that purchase and being a loyal community member of Rare Network, right? Um, and again, this is something that we definitely intend to roll out to other web stores um, for any type of purchase, no matter what the product is in both fiat or crypto based purchases. So you use a credit card to buy whatever it may be, or you use your crypto, um, whether it is actually Cardano um, based tokens, or let's say another chain and being able to get a Cardano native asset back in return uh, with some flexibility so that you know, other projects could use this and drip back their token rather than ADA, which will be the first token that um, is really supported. And the I would say the first um, token that we will drip back for our use case, um, but gave, gave some teasers there that may lead you to believe kind of what this tech stack will be um, built around uh, ultimately. Yeah, I love this particular proposal here. And the reason why is it can apply to any project in the ecosystem, right? I mean, I honestly can't think of a product, a project, a team that wouldn't benefit from loyalty points, right? At the end of the day, we're all here to build communities, build brand, build recognition. And this, I think, allows for projects to do that very seamlessly. And again, I love the fact that you guys are thinking not just about Rare Network, obviously, you know, you guys are the the initial benefiters, if that's even a word of the of the technology, but being able to then pass that on to anybody else in Cardano and saying, hey, you know, you can also use this and you can actually swap out the token that you're using to distribute to your personal community. Right. So um, really, really interesting there. A couple of quick questions from this perspective here. Um, I think asking if it's if this will be open source similar to the other um, proposal, I think would be a really good thing to maybe clarify now. But then also from a timeline perspective, and then even a development perspective, will this be the same two developers that you've mentioned that are in house for the first proposal? Um, and then how long do you see this taking? Yeah, in house development team, I think we will probably need to contract out a few specialists, um, just to make sure we get a second set of eyes and um, you know, perspective and input from others that do have specialty around building such solutions. Um, it will be very similar in approach to the conference goer app. Uh, we intend in the beginning to allow people to use this as a free service. And then of course, uh, start to strategize once we really deliver like all the base functionality, start to strategize how we can uh, create revenue off this uh, for the business. Um, again, you know, if people are getting Cardano native assets tripped back, they need a wallet, um, making sure that that's very intuitive and user friendly and doesn't take too many steps to steer someone off. Uh, but everyone likes, you know, free money um, coming back to them. And we don't like to over over commit, like I, I mentioned, but there are all sorts of like really cool ways to gamify this, whether it's like rewards multipliers, let's say, you know, if you have a rare perks VIP pass in your wallet, you might get a little bit more token drip back versus someone that just may have a GA who could still get an additional multiplier compared to someone that doesn't have any rare NFTs and really trying to create almost like a studio, I think, in the second phase where companies can go in and set these different parameters, different multipliers and further gamify the loyalty. Uh, so I've got a really, I think, a really cool vision kind of for the, the grandiose uh, product, but really trying to roll out base functionality for ticket purchases and merch purchases on our website uh, for Rare Evo 2025 is the main objective here. Um, I think we'll probably start with our, our customer base and close partners 
as to who has the ability to utilize our, our tech at first. And then we'll probably come out with a uh, price structure and model, you know, years down the road. Uh, again, once we have it viable for um, use by the masses. And then hopefully going outside of our, our ecosystem and just talking to traditional web stores um, that may want to give their customers a little bit more incentive to stay loyal and, you know, buy their merch or, or whatever products may be um, on their website alone. Nicely, nicely said. Um, one thing that I really like about that what was the customization piece. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have thought about this, but also even, uh, and, and I'm not sure what would necessarily be involved from a permissions perspective, but imagine that I'm a loyal member as a part of the Rare Network, right? And maybe there's a project or a community or you know somebody else who's outside that's like, hey, I would love to get access to Rare Network's loyal community Therefore, maybe I strike some sort of deal or partnership with Rare, right, to be able to send exclusive promotions to their community, which I already know, number one, like Rare, but I also know are already invested or like um, very loyal to Rare. Therefore, they could potentially be loyal to my brand as well, you know, if we've maybe got aligning missions or aligning objectives. So, um, again, I think there's a lot of opportunities here. One thing I will say is don't forget about the creators like myself. Um, I would definitely love to be able to also use something like this to maybe reward my community, right? Um, whether that's with merch, whatever the case is, as they contribute or um, engage with my content as well. So I think that'd be a really nice opportunity to tap into a new market there too. Yeah, to add to that, I mean, that was one of our big constraints this year was utilizing our promo codes and being able to work with content creators and other businesses um, that can get, you know, a kickback on helping us generate revenue, spreading the word and getting more ticket sales from their communities. Um, so promo codes, um, being able to select which Cardano native asset you get in return. For instance, Hosky already actually airdrops uh, for ticket purchases using his promo code. Right. We can automate that. We could give people the option um, or default it to Hosky if they use Hosky's promo code to purchase the ticket. Um, if someone, let's say, maybe just wants cash back and wants a cash discount and doesn't want the ADA dripped back, they could toggle that as an option as long as we allow it. So, yeah, all sorts of flexibility and options, I think, uh, as we get into, you know, the future versions uh, of this product suite. Yeah, there's a lot of potential here. And um, I also want to highlight the little bit of alpha you mentioned earlier about the, the rare token, right? So um, I want to make sure that that doesn't go unnoticed. Sounds like you guys are working on quite a bit there. And obviously, you know, as you guys implement this, maybe that's the first token that's distributed to the community. That may be the goal. And, you know, we as we as as we started as a stake pool, we want to give more people incentive to stake to rare stake pool. So the ticker is rare. And after August, when we have a massively successful Rare Evo 2024, Rand, I, and the team are definitely going to have a nice cabin in the woods retreat and set some timelines as to how uh, we roll that out. Make sure we have you know all the proper legal structures in place and guidance and tokenomics to make it a big win for everyone. Um, you know, we've been building the business for four years uh, with no token, no VC funding. And I think to expand, it's going to require uh, starting to build technology solutions and incorporating tokenization. So we look very much forward to that. I think we're very prepared and I think we've built the brand and the trust around the brand up uh, to where, you know, we can have a long term, you know, uh, tokenized uh, product and community. Yeah, you guys have um, done extremely well, again, year over year, improving after 
in, improvement after improvement. Um, I'm really looking forward to this year, and I know this is going to be the biggest one yet. So um, really looking forward to that and excited to be able to catch up and hopefully um, get a little bit of your time in person at the event. I know once the actual event kicks off, I mean, you guys are left and right trying to accommodate people, figure stuff out, you know, troubleshoot on the fly, make sure that everybody's having a good time. Um, but that aside, I will be looking to maybe hunt you guys down and catch catch up with you guys maybe after the event ends as well. Now, as we do get ready to close up uh, today's interview, um, there's three other proposals. I want to bundle them together here, though, right? So um, you guys obviously attend conferences, major conferences. Not only do you put them on, but you guys attend them as well. Um, the last one being consensus taking place in Austin um, for 2024. Now, I believe we've got the rare, uh, excuse me, the Cardano Summit. We've got Token 2049, I believe, taking place in Singapore. And then I think there's one more that I might be missing here as well. But do you mind breaking down and again, just kind of maybe putting all of these three together to explain exactly what are the goals of these event specific proposals? Yeah, so our rare social series has been a hit. Uh, we have done four this year, um, well over five in total, um, over 250 individuals, sometimes getting up to like the 600 person mark um, in attendance and being able to create basically a meetup and networking event um, that focuses around the Cardano ecosystem, but in a multi-chain environment at events like Consensus. Um, even ETH Denver, we had one with uh, various ETH DeFi uh, projects and Charles rolled through and it was a blast. Um, this uh, year going into 2025, like you mentioned, is Token 2049 Singapore. I kind of uh, became a young professional out here in Singapore and have lived here the past like, you know, half decade of the past 10 years. Um, and then we also have Consensus Hong Kong. Um, in 2025. Uh, this also includes the Cardano Summit in Dubai. And so basically throwing a, an awesome side event party where people can come in from all different chains, network, and are inevitably going to have a conversation uh, with a Cardano project lead, someone from uh, Cardano leadership, or just an eager member or investor of the community who's willing to kind of spread the gospel of Cardano. Um, so we you know, are very selective with these events. We pick very high um, value conferences where we know we're going to get a great turnout. And so far we've just had hit after hit after hit. The last one that we did was with Intersect MBO, Genius Yield, Genius X, and Emergo that was in uh, Austin for consensus. Uh, we went way over expected attendance. There was a line out the door we had to add to the to the, to the bar tab uh, to make it happen on our own dime. And uh, it was just amazing to see everyone there, the smiles, the drinks getting poured and the connections being made. And that's really what Rare Socials are all about. So continuing that um, series, making it more and more of our brand, it's a snowball effect. Every time we improve the social one aspect or another, and we see more and more newcomers and, you know, continued uh, like loyal, rare um, social goers. Um, I go to like a Web3 meetup. I mean, in Singapore is popping. I go to probably two to three Web3 meetups a week. And I've seen people that are like, hey, you threw the rare social and, you know, name your city, Paris, Dubai, Austin. Um, so that's been really cool to see and, and kind of get some recognition from. And I think not only does Cardano leadership approve of this approach, but also the community is really enjoying it. Those that got to experience it. So always look out if you're going to a conference to see if there's a rare social there and uh, come out and enjoy it. Let us know your input, what you feel we can prove on, what you think we did good. Uh, we love to hear the feedback. Yeah, I can definitely test for the community um, that the line was wrapped outside the venue in Austin, Texas. Um, thankfully, I got there a couple of minutes early. I was able to snag myself a wristband and really enjoy my time there. Um, I'm surprised you guys had to actually add to the tab. But actually, I take that back. It, it was a lot of people, you know, so I think it was like four, four or five hours ish. And by the time that you're done, I mean, that that's a lot. That's a lot going on there. It's crazy. And there's a lot of fun. We've done it at like putt putt, like crazy futuristic putt-putt golf courses like built into a bar um, they had bowling at the one in consensus uh we're not you know slamming you with techno music from a dj where people can't hear each other there's 
um, opportunity for team building games, sitting by the bar and um, chatting with someone or just, you know, tuning out and finally enjoying not listening to a speech or, you know, mingling booth to booth at the conference if you've been working all day. Um, I think one, you know, element that's huge is the media that surrounds this. So throughout these rare socials, we're interviewing Cardano project leads, getting their opinion on the event, um, showcasing the sponsors that um, give us added support to throw the socials and be able to afford a, a larger budget with a higher attendee count. Um, and then on top of that, kind of wrapping that rare social experience into a greater vlog of our general conference experience and travels um, where we, yeah, we focus on web three, but we usually come out with an addition of those vlogs that are more like travel vlog centered. So you get people that aren't necessarily just into crypto uh, starting to watch uh, our media. Um, so another, you know, alley for um, user adoption and getting people more intrigued um, into web three that, you know, are just trying to see a restaurant review or a certain feature in a city from a tourist standpoint. That's a really great point that you make there about potential opportunities to onboard. Um, that said, Wes, I believe that'll take us through all of the five proposals that the Rare Network has put out. For the viewers, I will leave links to every single one of them down below. Um, as we get ready to just kind of tune out here, anything that you want to highlight that you didn't get the opportunity to mention so far? No, I think we covered it all. Um, well, there's always something. We have Zed, uh, one of the world's top DJs, playing our closeout party at Rare Evo. Um, so if you're not in it for, from the business standpoint, a lot of people perceive our event as businessy and overly professional. This is going to be an absolute crazy party. Uh, we have three different parties that are just produced from our team. There are other people throwing parties. So if you're just coming to have a good time, hang out with your friends and, you know, get away from the computer desk or X to meet and mingle in person, this is the place to be. And just a huge uh, thank you from our team, myself and Rand and everyone else who's a part of Rare Network uh, for the continued support coming out to Rare Evo, coming out to the Rare Socials. And of course, your very important and valuable vote in Fund 12 Project Catalyst for those um, that participate. Nice way to go ahead. Did you want to add anything else right there? I was going to say, and I thank you to yourself, Fareed, for helping us uh, promote our mission and always supporting us and being one of the you know top tier uh, media personalities uh, within our community. Thank you. That really, really means a lot. And um, again, the feeling is, is mutual. You guys have done a lot for me, right? The ecosystem and for me to, to shoot content at an event and then be able to relax, go attend a, a rare social, not have to worry about, you know, anything. Just being able to, as you mentioned, sort of um, unwind has really been a lot for me as well. So I thank you for putting in all the work and thank you for um, being contributing members, not only in Cardano, but you guys are now also bringing or becoming bridge builders along for people outside of the ecosystem to also come in. So um, again, the feeling is mutual. Um, that will do it here for today's video. Again, big thank you, Wes. I appreciate you joining me for this update, not only about Rare in the network, but also about what you guys are aiming to do moving forward. For the viewers watching at home, if you guys have any questions as it pertains to either the loyalty program or the conference and attendee platform, please make sure to leave them down below. If you plan on attending rare um, definitely let me know down below as well and of course make sure to go ahead and get your tickets and get ready to join the rare socials um, for i believe it'll be the cardano summit um, token 2049 and then consensus in hong kong i'm not sure if i'm going to make all of those but i definitely look forward to seeing you at at least one of those uh moving forward wes again i really appreciate you jumping on here um, for the viewers watching at home if you guys found any portion of today's video to be helpful i would really appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up not only does it support me here on the channel it helps to get this content to other members outside of cardano if you guys want more content like this highlighting all the builders within the ecosystem consider subscribing to that central and last but not least if you have any questions for myself or wes here um, as it pertains to rare or their proposals then make sure to leave a comment down below that said and as always we'll see you guys in the next video search rare to vote rare let's go cheers Reed.